This video is brought to you by patreon.com slash worst take. Get access to exclusive live streams and Discord servers, on-screen shout outs, and early access to some videos when you join now. Help make sure that we can continue to make content like this by supporting the Patreon. Links are in the description down below. I have been wanting to say this since Thursday, but I haven't had the opportunity to, to get down and in studio and make a whole fuss about it yet. Browns fans are awesome, man. Browns fans are still awesome. And look, this has been a tumultuous year. Some of you guys who came into the season loving Browns fans, loving being a Browns fans, have probably cursed Browns fans and cursed being a Browns fan yourself because this has been the kind of season that it's been. And I understand that. And I'm not judgmental of that. I understand how much we care about this team and what that does. See, a lot of people want passion. But what people don't understand is that that passion is messy. You want somebody to care about what their kids are doing, but you don't want somebody to be too mad at a bad report card. But if you care, you're going to care about that report card. You're going to care about how that kid's doing in a sport, whatever it is. You're going to care about it because you're passionate about it, right? Passion comes with its level of mess if you're not careful about it. It's not just a universally good thing. And Browns fans are probably one of the most, if not the most, passionate fan bases in the country. Any sport. Browns fans are up there. Um, and they showed out on Thursday night. We saw Browns fans do what they do and why Browns fans are awesome. Browns fans are loyal. Browns fans are willing to stick with this team no matter what. Browns fans will cuss each other out in the comment section. But you know what? When it comes to game day, if we got to be out there with the shirt offs, barking in a freezing cold stadium to beat the Steelers, that's just what Browns fans are going to do. Right. So what I want to talk about a little bit more in depth is like why Browns fans are like this and kind of some of the, the, mi the mindset that the fan base carries that kind of makes it so that we have these tougher relationships with certain players than others. And this is something that I get frustrated with the Cleveland Browns organization with a lot because I think that they don't understand what it is that they have in Browns fans. See, a lot of times people will sell you how supportive Browns fans are, which is true. I've heard many of tell uh, of Browns players randomly being about town and somebody showing them love because they play on the Browns and then you, you find out that they got the tattoo or something or, or they named a child Miles or something like that. It, it's a lot of uh, it's a lot of Miles is out there because Miles Garrett is good at football. Browns fans are supportive, but that buries the lead. Browns fans are not just supportive. We're passionate. We care, which means if you put a bad product on the field, we care. We're going to boo that product. We don't want that shit. But if you put a good product on the field, we're going to be the loudest you ever felt. And it ain't going to take that much. We just want you to show us that you care too. You know, like one day, if I could do anything for the Browns organization, I would love to play a role in the orientation of bringing players into Cleveland and explaining them the culture of the fan base and the culture of Cleveland when it comes to the Browns. Because we talked about it, yeah, Browns fans are supportive, but we're passionate, and that means something different. And Browns fans are very specific with what they love about their football team. They love the Browns, not just because they play football, but because the city of Cleveland has a special connection to being the underdog. 
Like, if you look at the people that this city on this football team has loved the most, it's been the underdogs of this city. Like, Rashad Higgins was more loved than Odell Beckham. And to the outside looking in, that sounds crazy. Jarvis Landry was significantly more loved than Odell Beckham or some of the other big names that we have in here. But there's a reason why the superstar names don't seem to work out in Cleveland, but dudes like Amari Cooper do work out with the fan base or Jarvis Landry do. That's because Jarvis Landry is and was always a underdog. It's very easy for Browns fans to feel at home with Jarvis Landry because Jarvis Landry was an underdog. And you feel like with him, it makes sense. When you trade for Deshaun Watts, when you trade for Odell Beckham, you put the fan base at a weird place, whether you intentionally do it or not, because you're just trying to build the best football team possible. But when you bring on those guys who bring that mainstream attention to the to your team, you suddenly turn a team from being the underdog to not feeling like the underdog at all. And I don't think Browns fans like that. Like, I don't think Cleveland fans like that. Like, there's still some, like, weirdness about LeBron in, in Cleveland, even though he won a championship here. But you notice the one championship uh, run that we love the most, or at least the championship runs that we love the most from LeBron James were the very few times in his career where he was forced into a underdog role, right? 07 playoff run, underdog role. We fell in love with LeBron because of that. And what we did not like about LeBron James, and again, this is the psyche of Cleveland. We feel like the underdog, we're an underdog city. When you watch LeBron James, go from being an underdog that you identify with to choosing to play with the Miami Heat where you're no longer going to be the underdog. And it feels like LeBron not just rejecting your team, but rejecting the very thing that the city stands for, which is being an underdog, because he gave up on being an underdog and went to an overwhelming favorite. Like it was the ultimate betrayal in the sense of, how Browns fans view this whole thing through the lens of the underdog. LeBron comes back, wins to LeBron comes back. He wins a lot in Cleveland. And that first year felt weird because you didn't really feel like the underdog. You felt like it was just waiting for it to happen. And then Golden State beat you. And then Golden State goes on this crazy run. And all of a sudden you're the underdog again. And you're down one three one against the most dominant regular season team in NBA history. And all of a sudden, it felt right. Like 2016, that championship, it felt right. Uh, and for the rest of the LeBron era, it felt right because LeBron was the underdog. Whether we're aware of it or not, this is the ethos of the fan base and the ethos of why certain players work in Cleveland and why they don't. Baker Mayfield works in Cleveland because Baker Mayfield feels like the underdog. That's why so many people still want Baker Mayfield back because it just made sense, right? If you look at the ethos of this city, Having a dude who was known for being a walk-on, underdog, he, he's the underdog in the 2018 class. Like, it makes sense that people still root for Baker Mayfield in the city of Cleveland. Deshaun Watson, they were never going to embrace him. He never felt like the underdog. Like, he had to get to the points where he feels like an underdog. And even with him being an underdog right now, he ain't an underdog for any of the good reasons, right? Like, any of the sports reasons that make you feel like, yeah, let, let's let's get behind this dude. He's an outlier in the underdog conversation. But when he got traded here, it was not an underdog move. It only became an underdog move because he historically underwhelmed. Cleveland fans love an underdog story. Cleveland fans don't like things on their teams that make them not feel like the underdog anymore. Like there's still part of us that wants to feel that. And I think that's important to understand when we're talking about why Browns fans 
react to players this way. Why Browns fans react to things that happen this way is because Browns fans do not like not being the underdog. There's something about it that we love. And the reason I bring this up is so we can talk about and understand like why it is that this team feels so much better to root for. Obviously, the Deshaun Watson thing has something to do with it. But also, I think part of it is being a underdog. I think Browns fans like teams that are underdogs. I think Browns fans like teams that have a lot of fight in them. Right? The record can be whatever the record is, understanding the context of every year. But Browns fans will get especially mad if they feel like the team is not fighting hard, right? Like this is part of the identity of the city of Cleveland, which is a underdog city, a hardworking city, a scrapping city, right? Like this is a city that is a little bit scrappy. This is a city that is underdog. This is a city that does work hard. Um, and if the team, no matter what, team it is right remember last year's calf where people thought that they weren't strong or they were like weak um they weren't like tough and people were out on them um that played a big role in how people received that team like this stuff matters in the city of cleveland like how the city perceives you if they feel like you're fighting every week if they feel like you're playing hard every week um players who don't feel like they playing hard those are the guys who get turned on the first by the fan base right um i mean you could just point to the browns players that aren't liked by the fans and they have something in common there right like the perception is they don't give it their all every week. And that's why Jay Wills, like that was a move that he could not afford to do the whole business decision thing. Not in this city. Um, this is a city that's not going to care about no damn business decision. That's a white collar city thing. That's not a blue collar city thing. And I think understanding the psyche of Browns fans is important because a lot of people like to talk their shit about why Browns fans are like this and why Browns fans act like this. But like, let's really dig into why Browns fans love this team and love football the way that they do and start to try to understand from our perspective, why certain things would bother us a little bit more than they would in other cities. Um, especially if those things make it feel like the team isn't working as hard um, or fighting is hard to win. You know, maybe it's because most of our lives we've had to hear jokes about Cleveland and how nobody ever wants to live there and how you're stupid for living in Cleveland. Like all the Cleveland jokes and that builds a resilience, maybe a bit of a contrarian attitude to what most people would like. We look at it and we go, no, it's, it's a weird thing but this is how the city is, right? The city looks at themselves as the underdog and they want their sports teams to feel like that. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Y'all have a great day. Have a better night. Peace.